uh, Jekyll and Hyde English Literature GCSE Scheme of Learning, um, looking at the excerpt lessons. I've got um, Phoebe here to talk us through. Um, we have the actual text right in front of us. So, you know, beyond reading it in the class with your students, they can actually do this at home. Um, should, can we listen to some of the human narration? ...was to rise and get his hat and greatcoat. But he observed with wonder the greatness of the relief that appeared upon the butler's face. So really powerful there. How did you choose these um, these words, Phoebe? Um, sure. So if you look at this excerpt that we're looking at specifically, um, not only are these kind of challenging words, diaphanous, calamity, anguish, they're also, especially at this point, well, at this point in the novel is a good example of it. They're, they're thematic. So we're getting close to the climax here. We are um, in the knowledge lessons learning about suspense. We are learning how Stevenson uses weather to create suspenseful atmosphere. So with um, the word diaphanous, for example, that is key to the description of the atmosphere and the weather here at this at this point in the novel. And then we've got anguish and hysterical, which characterizes all of the um, kind of suspense within the characters as well. Great. So we'll just follow um, the journey of the word diaphanous then. Um, initially, students are um, greeted with a pretest. So the pretests are inbuilt throughout the texts. So um, here we. Which of these things is diaphanous? If I just select one. Diaphanous. And then I'm directly the taken into the talk describes slide. describes something that's so light, thin, and delicate you can see through it. Think about fabric or cloth you can see through like the veils sometimes worn by brides at weddings. When a dragonfly landed next to Zhiwu, she admired its diaphanous wings. Really good to see, as with Better Vocabulary, that student-friendly description and example. So once I've gone through all of those, then it takes me through um, teaching these words explicitly um, within the context of that excerpt. So diaphanous, I'd have a reading comprehension question um, with that immediate um, feedback, which steers me in the right direction. Go. Stevenson describes the clouds as having a diaphanous and lawny texture. If the clouds are diaphanous, what do they look like? So it really steers you in the right direction, just as you would in the classroom. Now, if I go through, they get, you know, they um, experience the word visually. Um, beautiful picture there. Um, <laughs> they build their synonyms and antonyms. So they've got that frame of reference and they can actually analyze it um, in a sophisticated way um, in their own words. Um, and then they are putting it into a sentence. Now, this is all building up to the most important part of, I think, of this scheme of learning. When it came to... Um, um, the modelled analysis, Phoebe, um, how did you go about, you know, what? how did you choose what you were going to focus on? So um, we, we just have spent such a long time in development looking at the text, choosing the specific um, characters, themes, devices, writers, techniques um, and context to teach that we built the analysis based on that. So we honed in on these excerpts and looked for specific um, and kind of really easily accessible points that we can analyze and to model a critical style. So um, the first analysis activity will kind of start off a bit simpler. We'll have like a language replacement activity where either they'll have to replace a critical term or kind of do more, you know, it's more of a comprehension of analysis um, activity. And then we'll move through and they'll gradually scaffold the student's own writing um, all the while modeling critical responses, modelling, academic referencing. Um, for this this analysis activity, for example, oh, yeah, so the student will have the opportunity to build their own points of analysis, um, which direct them to the text and ask them specific exam modelled exam questions. Great, and there are um, sentence starters there as well. This mm -hmm. looks like a lot of hours of planning saved for teachers. And I'll just give you um, an example of the feedback again. Just, you know, imagine you have marked loads of past papers. It takes you about two weeks to mark them. This takes about, you know, two minutes for them to get that feedback. This piece of analysis points out that Utterson gives Paul a glass.